Welcome to this podcast. In this podcast, I'd like to talk about the moon's placement in Scorpio. First and foremost, uh, this is one of the most potent placements in all of astrology. And the reason will become fairly obvious uh, soon. The primary reason for this potency is that the moon in itself, by its very nature, is an unconscious instinct. It rules the aspect of our reality that we're not focusing on. And the way that subjective reality is experienced is that there is an attentive focus surrounded by a haze of inattentiveness, which is largely unconscious and so largely controlled and driven by that moon. And this is the way most of us spend the bulk of our existence. We are in automatic phase. And it's a learned behavior. It's a learned and very familiar behavior because it is largely what made up most of our childhood. Because we didn't have focus per se. You know, having a focus requires having an objective. And, you know, the really serious objectives are pursued in adulthood. Okay? So prior to all of that, we just exist in various degrees of unconsciousness. Okay? But that's not what accounts for the potency in this placement. The potency comes from the fact that Scorpio in itself is a difficult sign. And I've explained in numerous podcasts featuring Scorpio that this difficulty resides in a duality that exists deep within Scorpio. That is the fear, the extreme fear regarding something and the simultaneous attractiveness to that thing. And the attractiveness itself is obsessive compulsive, meaning that the individual is literally torn between two extremes and they cannot run away. They cannot leave this choice. So in one part of themselves, they are drawn to something that they are also simultaneously frightened of. And the fear is deep. And the reason for this is because the Scorpio really consists of two persons that are in constant sexual union with themselves. That is the figurative, if you want to think about Scorpio, think about two people embraced in eternal lovemaking. Now, when the person is born with significant Scorpio placements. They are born as a single individual, but they are part of a pair. The other half is missing. And this is the enigma that exists and resides within Scorpio because you are driven now to search for a completion of yourself. And, you know, the primal instinct, the urge itself is sexual in its origin. It's very primitive because it is the union between the two sexual organs. And so the scorpion is born and is perennially afraid that they will not be able to find this other half of them. And so the mind becomes obsessed with the fear of failing in this task. And so the mind sinks deeper into a a type of unconscious instinctual state whereby they are scanning their environment because of this fear. They are scanning the environment for threats. And the threats revolve around anything that can cut short this mission of finding the other half. It's like there's a love made in heaven and then you come down to earth and the other half is missing. And then you're, you know, you cannot live without this other half. You cannot live without the knowledge, the missing memories from this other half. So you are driven to find this other half instinctually. It's not something that you even have a say in. And you tend to perceive them in everything. The closer you come to them, the more the patterns that you see become more real and more obsessive compulsive. And there's some individuals that carry patterns that just remind you of something like some people call it a karmic kind of love because the, pa- the person contains patterns that remind you of some a memory that you have not had yet. And so the pool can be very strong. But that's the mind's way of dealing with something that is missing, an absence, an absence that was created by a formidable presence. That's really what it is. And so this is the enigma of Scorpio. And most Scorpios are not aware of this. They cannot, they have not been able to articulate what it is that they feel to this degree. And so the emotion itself, which is a very strong, intense kind of emotion, is jumbled up within them and it seeks exits out of them. It wants to leave the psyche. But if it doesn't know what's going on, then the application is towards other extreme kind of behavior and very risky behaviors. They are attracted towards darkness in the sense that hidden things, you know, things that cannot easily be explained, mysterious things, very charged, intense and spiritual things. They are drawn towards those things because it reflects the aspect of themselves that is missing. There's a famous problem that reflects this in science today. It's the existence of dark matter. Now, 
Scientists, physicists, or cosmologists, they have theorized the existence of dark matter based on inference. Very logical, credible inference. The problem is that you can't see it. And apart from the gravitational interaction, you have no other way to realize that it's there. But the fact is that without its presence, then none of the physics works. So you know it's there. It just doesn't interact with light. So it doesn't interact with the electrical aspect of the world. And our human brains are electrical. You see? That's just a, a good analogy to describe what Scorpio feels. They can intuit and infer the existence of something, another half of them, but they have no idea what it is, and they are driven to search for it. Okay? And if you're one of those people that a Scorpio, a significant Scorpio placement, latches onto because they see this thing, this thing they can't really describe, they feel it in that person, then there is a strong connection. The Scorpio is very strongly attracted to that person. Okay? Now, when the moon is placed in Scorpio, all of this I have described goes deep into the unconscious and instinctual. And the individual within themselves can sense Scorpio deep within themselves, all these pressures. And unlike the typical Scorpio personality, will eventually look for ways to express this energy. The moon in Scorpio cannot easily express it. The challenge is doubly implied. Because the moon is not an outward going energy. It's internal. It wants to incubate whatever it comes across and to internalize it in such a way that it becomes the deepest part of your psyche. So that's literally like taking what all what Scorpio means and this pressure, this missing half, and then internalizing it so deep that no one can really see that this is what is going on within the person. And yet the individual is literally a boiling and bubbling volcano. And so the moon in Scorpio personality is typified by a blank expression, an expression that does not convey emotion one way or the other. You cannot really tell that they're happy or that they're sad. What you perceive is indifference. But as the mask, that is the mask that the moon in Scorpio personality creates because they cannot, under any circumstance, allow you to see what is going on underneath. Because if you see it, it is extremely vulnerable, very vulnerable, and they're masters of concealment, you know? Their resting face literally has no emotion to it, you know? And they could be walking by you every day with no emotion, and yet they are absolutely and strongly attracted to you. Now, this is, requires an intense amount of strength because it means that all of that turmoil and all of that emotional state is suppressed. And suppression is precisely what the Scorpio is looking for because once you suppress Scorpionic energy, it must come out somewhere else. That's like planting a seed in the ground. It develops roots. It becomes even stronger. And so these people have habits and things that they do in secret that will make I don't care who you are. You cannot be darker than the moon in Scorpio. Within them, they have felt all shades of human emotion, all types. And they cannot stop these things from impinging on their consciousness because it comes from the unconscious part of them. And they're constantly holding themselves in a vice-like grip with a strong, a very strong will to ensure that all of that is hidden from view because the moon is very vulnerable. And so what is incub being incubated is an extremely strong will. Okay? And this will must go somewhere, obviously. So they're very good at manipulation. They're very good at subterfuge. In the sense that they're very good at planning. But there are emotional outbursts when they cannot hold the pressure in any, any longer. And then, you know, it all comes out. And their emotional outbursts are something that everyone should be terrified about. Because they just... It's literally an explosion of chaos. But they also make, you know, for those who are inclined in that way, they make one of the best love partners in the sense that sexual partners, because you're dealing with a live wire, a volcano, literally. And the shock that you will experience when you go between the sheets with this person, the shock will blow you away because this is someone that really doesn't seem to have that much emotions within them. And then you will wonder, where's all this coming from? What is this? This is like getting hit with a tornado from clear skies. You're going to be scratching your head. Where did the, all this energy come from? Yeah, it's been there and it's there and it's suppressed. And that's what makes these individuals, uh, it gives them their best and their worst qualities. Now, in the area of personal possessions, for instance, the moon in Scorpio always has a secret vault. 
they squirrel money away and they hide it they probably even hide it from themselves that's how deep they want to internalize their possessions okay the instinct to nurture is taken to personal possessions in the area of personal communication in the environment this is you might as well be talking to a robot everyday interaction plain but you will never know who they really are because they wouldn't give anything away and they wouldn't let you come close. Good luck with that. You will dig and dig and dig and they have this ability, the kind of magnetism that they radiate. They draw you in so that you can spill all your secrets and you do this voluntarily, you know. There's something about them. Their magnetism just draws you in. You feel like they are an incubator where you can feel safe and all that and you divulge all your secrets but they'll never tell you theirs. You will never hear a peep squeak from them regarding the way that they really feel or the reality that they live in. You won't hear a word. And this is what typifies them. You might as well be talking to a drone. In the area of their home and their environment, you know, they are very controlling. Very, very controlling. In fact, it is the, the home environment where this behavior of theirs was eventually forged. Most of them grew up in environments that were very intense. Maybe the father or the mother, somebody was extremely controlling and they learned a response to this behavior. They learned to keep themselves safe. They had to deal with the pressures from that early environment. And one of the ways that they learned to do that was to basically hide who they are. That's really what it is. From a self-expressive point of view, they're not very self-expressive beyond the regular things. They try to fit in because, you know, they are very different from the, no the normal human beings. Like I said, this placement is very potent. They're very different from normal people. I know a lot of people have moon in Scorpio. So there are these type of people walking around. But remember, no placement can be experienced individually. It's all part of a, a wider narrative. So luckily for everybody else, these placements are always ameliorated within the overall context of the natal chart. So it's very difficult to find reinforcements in the moon in Scorpio uh, placement such that this is what now comes out from the individual on a very regular basis. And so they're not very self-expressive. They're very good workers. They, are, they can become very dedicated to their daily routine and it might even form part of an obsessive compulsive uh, pattern of behavior. And anything or anyone that interferes with that will meet the sting of a scorpion. Okay, that's the kind of people they are. They have a penchant and a potential for obsessive compulsive behavior. Now, in the area of partnerships, wow. These are people that, first of all, are very difficult to get to know because they're hidden and they're very well talked in a way within themselves. Even they themselves spend a lot of time within themselves wondering where all these feelings they have come from. It's like a piece of water that is held in a frozen state, trying their best not to thaw, let go. Okay, So within partnerships, they're very difficult to know. They are mysterious, they're magnetic, and they're brooding. They are a kind of moodiness that is also laced with a sense of danger. As in, you hurt this person, they're not going to go and cry. Revengeful hate is an automatic response or isolation. They, if you hurt them, you become dead to them. They just isolate you from their worldview and that's it. And usually that type of response comes from when they sense a tendency towards betrayal. For if something had slipped from them, for instance, and they hear that same thing somewhere else, that means you have betrayed them. You know, the response for them is automatic because this Scorpio is in their unconscious, basically. Now, in the area of shared resources and sex, oh my goodness, the moon in Scorpio is inundated. This is what makes their existence, day-to-day -day awareness, very potent. They are inundated with sexuality on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. Their mind is inundated with what can only be described as erotica on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. I mean, listen, I think the only mental state that comes close to this is the Mercury in Scorpio placement. Otherwise, the moon in Scorpio placement takes the cake all the time for having a mind that is absolutely embedded in erotic images. And it's overwhelming. It's almost overpowering. And so they're in a constant state of trying to hold themselves together. That's why if you eventually 
if you are of that disposition and you're lucky enough to end up in bed with this person, what you're going to meet is just very different from who you thought you knew. There is an outburst of passion and energy that is just a very primitive instinct to love making that is just, it'll make you say, wow. But as a loyal partner, you know, if they can eventually get to trust you, because that's something very difficult for them to do. Trust comes very hard one to these people. They do not trust anybody. And it is hard for them to trust you. And if for some reason they eventually trust you, then it's almost like a setup because you will fail. Whatever measure you use, you will fail. Okay? And you will hurt them and you will get the sting of Scorpio. You know, the idea is to have this thing be in a manageable form so it doesn't devastate you. Okay? That's how people stay married to these people or stay partners with them. You learn to manage this thing so that it's not devastating. Because they will come round again eventually, especially if they have come to the conclusion that you are one of theirs. You are theirs. Okay? So they will sting you. There's no doubt about it. They will do things without telling you. They will say it's in your best interest. All right? And they will look out for you even when you're not looking out for yourself. And that might mean doing things that you probably will not find comfortable. They're always looking ahead because they scan the environment for threats. And their scanning nature is deeper than your typical average Scorpio or your Sun in Scorpio or your Venus in Scorpio or your Mars in Scorpio. Because they understand the unconscious nature of these threats and they're constantly embedded within it. And so it's really hard for them to exit a relationship that they have literally sunk themselves into and embedded themselves into. They would ride out the storm with you. They are loyal, very, very loyal once they can get to trust you. It's just that trusting you is a bit, is very difficult for them, but there are ways you know, if you can somehow prove to them that you will help them hide a body with no questions asked, and then, you know, you guys might hit it off. In the area of higher development and long distance travel, they prefer to reside around water. They prefer solitude. The moon in Scorpio likes solitude because they're brooding. They are constantly always dealing with something. There's no moment where they're not dealing with it. They're constantly under pressure an emotional pressure, a psychic pressure. And because of that, they are highly intuitive. Highly intuitive. Look, you can't lie to these type of people because they are literally embedded in the unconscious in that way. And so they are scanning all the environments. Their mind is constantly overworked and they're constantly under this tension, which is always a sexual tension. Always. What I want to do is to convey to you the type of sexual tension that these people suppress every minute of their existence. They live in a very dark, mysterious world where their sexuality wants to erupt at every point in time. And they have to control themselves to hold that down. And the moon, because it is moody and changeable, it is predictably changeable. So they have periods when this intensity changes, like the cycles of the moon. And when you have this intensity at its peak performance, wow, they usually seek solitude during those times because they're irritable and they're under emotional strain. Okay? So if you have a partner like that, you probably have noticed that they have these periods and these moods that seem to swing, you know, and they become very touchy and very irritable and very hurtful at that point in time. From a public perception point of view, no, these people don't want to be in the limelight. Mm -mm. They don't want who they really are to be in any type of limelight. They prefer the internal space and they guard that internal space with dragons. So they don't want you shining a light into that part of themselves. In fact, one of the worst things you can do to this placement is to expose them to ridicule, to public ridicule. It's finished. They will never forgive you. You will never be the same with this person again. That's done. If they don't go for revenge one way or the other, they simply just cut you off for life. So not advised. In the area of friendships and groups and, you know, hopes and wishes, well, the hope of this person is to find a mate, someone who's like them, as private as they are, where they can be their true selves with no fear or risk of exposure. A safe environment where they can explore all the mysteries that Scorpio presents to the psyche. That's what they really hope for, okay? 
As for friends, good luck with that. No matter how many people surrounds them in a group, you will never know these people if they don't let you in. And that door remains fiendishly closed and it is guarded by two dragons. So good luck with that. As for hidden motives, well, like I said, they're always planning some type of revenge in, within themselves and they're always driven by erotic images. It inundates their unconscious awareness. It is very, very, very powerful. You know, these people are overstimulated naturally. It's not like they're sexual maniacs because they hold all of that in and they can cheat, definitely, absolutely. But it will be one of the most private things ever. Okay, you will never know. They will deny it to the end. But their hidden motives revolve around this part of themselves that they don't want exposed under any cost. They, they cannot tolerate exposure. Okay, but apart from that, they also cannot stand people who are just playing out evil because they are constantly in protective mode. And their protective mode is to conceal and, and hide that which is very vulnerable to them. And the vulnerability that they have is their sexuality. The fact that they are deeply sexual is what they hide. Because they cannot allow this to become common knowledge, you know. And some of them, depending on how it is placed in a natal chart, these are people who are very prone to sexual abuse. It's almost like they're magnified because from them exudes a magnetism. It's very primal, but it's also very powerful. You know, it's one of the most potent placements for the Scorpio archetype. In the area of partnerships and shared resources, it's very hard for them to share because in order to share, you have to be open. So once they can trust you, they can share with you. They also have access to legacies. It is not unusual for them to have inheritances you know, and the moon in Scorpio, when it is part of a natal chart, the message is a blending of these two water signs, Cancer and Scorpio, and the intensity comes from there. You see, Cancer is the need to internalize as emotions. Uh, Scorpio is the need to share these emotions. So the moon that rules Cancer really is concerned with acceptance. And so it seeks acceptance from that which is closest to it, that which nurtures it, and then once it receives its acceptance, it builds its own form of self-acceptance. Now, in Scorpio, that self-acceptance is what is being shared with another person. So based on aspects to the moon, and based on the placement and the condition of the moon within the natal chart, that's when we can really judge if this self-acceptance has taken place properly, before it now makes aspects to the rulers of Scorpio or within Scorpio itself. So it's a very delicate thing to judge because the overall natal chart needs to be considered. But most times when you find the moon embedded in Scorpio, there is a connection to other placements that reinforce the theme that Scorpio implies within the natal chart. Depending on the house that Scorpio is sitting on, it will definitely relate to the ruler of the eighth house or something. The patterns are always deeper. It's not a superficial story when the moon is embedded in Scorpio. And the moon obviously will be embedded in Scorpio for two and a half days every month. So there are a lot of people with moon in Scorpio. But the context changes now. The degree is important because the potential of a sign wanes as you go from 1 to 30 degrees. Okay, so a placement very early in Scorpio is more powerful and more potent than a placement towards the end stage of Scorpio. Okay, that's usually a rule of thumb. It's always contextual, so be that as it may that I have talked about the moon in Scorpio, these individual aspects or placements are never to be considered individually. They're always placed within a context. And so all the difficulties naturally associated with this placement, they are ameliorated once they are placed within the context of the natal chart. As for money, the moon in Scorpio personality fares better when they are engaged in a closed type of partnership, very closed and very private. And they fare better when they invest their money in things that take time to grow, things that have predictable growth. No get-rich-quick scheme with these type of personalities. Investment is their second nature because they're always squirreling things away. They're always hiding things away. So being able to put things away and seemingly forget about them is one of their superpowers.